Hi everybody and welcome back to my Medscape video blog. Uh, we're really focusing on GI tract cancer and colon cancer in particular. And I wanted to keep drilling down on some of this new molecular biology that is coming out with regard to colon cancer. And in specific, I want to talk about microsatellite instability. So let's go back to the beginning. We know that colon cancer sort of has two kinds of uh, pathogenesis, if you will. There's that classic polyp progression that's been so well defined by Bert Vogelstein. Um, and then there's the other kind, and that's these flat lesions, these lesions that emerge without uh, a polyp. We know that the polyp side of things, 80% of all colon cancer falls onto that side. Um, we understand a lot about its biology. The other side actually is sort of emerging as a new area. Um, it was discovered because of the Lynch syndrome, the HNPCC syndrome. Um, and we drilled down on the biology and understand that one of the genetic errors results in something called microsatellite instability. Well. Um, Digging further, folks have looked at, well, if your tumor was microsatellite unstable, how do you do with regard to chemotherapy? And there is some very good evidence emerging that people whose tumors have this mutation that leads to microsatellite instability don't respond as well to chemotherapy. And so we've been thinking about how to incorporate this information into clinical trials and the like. Well, at ASCO this year, there's a very important but very small clinical trial that was done that uh, looked at patients from, frankly, the 1980s and 90s who were on adjuvant studies, half of whom just had surgery. The other half had surgery followed by chemotherapy. And Dan Sargent and a group at Mayo Clinic drilled into this patient population and found out of the pot about 105, 106 patients who had microsatellite unstable tumors and looked to see what the impact of chemotherapy was on this group of people. And what he found was fascinating. It suggested that if your tumor was microsatellite unstable or MSI high, particularly the stage two group, if you got chemotherapy, if you got 5-FU, that in fact your outcome was worse. That 5-FU chemotherapy in the adjuvant setting was a bad idea and made your outcome worse. Even in stage 3 patients, there wasn't really an improvement of chemotherapy. Now, biggest problem about this whole thing, it's two decades old patients, and uh, they really was a very, very small subset of patients. And so, you know, is this reflective? Should we bring this to prime time right away? Some of my colleagues have. They've said, we're going to do this right away. Um, we're going to measure this, and we're not going to give chemotherapy to patients who have stage 2 disease that's MSI high. I'm not so sure, and therefore uh, my comfort zone is to put patients on the cooperative group trial, which actually takes MSI high patients and assigns them no treatment as an option. But at least under that umbrella, we're going to learn whether or not this is the right thing to do. So it's fascinating. How will oxaliplatin and the other biologics factor into this? Um, it's not clear, but you're going to hear a lot about microsatellite instability in colon cancer and the choice of drugs that are being used. And so I thought you had a, needed a pretty good foundation on where it all comes from and what it's all about. So thanks and come back.